Amen. Yes, uh, this is one message I tried to run away from so much. Um, uh, Pastor, I tried. I tried very hard to find something else, and it still wouldn't come. But, um, you know, in the Old Testament, every time the, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, before he went, the first thing he did was sacrifice for himself first because he is a sinner like everybody else. So even in these words, I feel like that high priest having to speak to myself first. So uh, I like to speak about the purpose and power of fathers. The purpose and father, power of fathers. Why honor your father? Let's read Exodus chapter 20, and we'll just read quickly. Exodus chapter 20, from verse 1. And God spake all these things, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Jump down to verse 12. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So that's in the Old Testament. Then we go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And I read from verse 9. The Pharisees were complaining that the disciples did not wash their hands before eating. Verse 9, he said that he, Jesus, said to them, All too well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. I hope that at the end of this message, you will be able to understand the incredible weight and huge significance why Jehovah God gave this command buried deep within the well-known Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. And then Jesus repeated the same command in the New Testament as if to say, this is doubly important. Once I've spoken, twice you've heard. So I'm going to start with, with some very sad news. This is contained in, you can buy it on, on the internet, books and articles. And these are the result of several r researches conducted by people who are not Christians. These are secular people. And so you can't blame and say, oh, you are quoting it from the Bible. I remember I was talking to something. He said, how do you know this? And I quote for this. He said, that's all you know. You're always quoting from the Bible. That's the only... Yes. Okay, this time we are, we are quoting what people who don't even know God talk about. Time magazine published an article years ago, and they did it. It was in a research about fathers, and this is a direct quote. It says, "More than virtually any factor, more than any factor, a biological father's presence in the family." will determine a child's success and happiness. This is from the world. So they conclude through research by secular scientists, psychology uh, analysts, psychiatrists, and behavioral scientists. They come to the conclusion that a biological father's presence in the family 
will determine a child's success and happiness. So, if this is true, if this is true, then a child in a home with two mothers or a child in a home without a father is already in great danger. It has nothing to do with the gospel. It has nothing to do with God. I mean, don't say, oh, you, you Christians. No. From research, that, that uh, publication in Time, you know, Time magazine is well honored. Everybody in the whole world, they read Time magazine. So this is a well honored magazine. In that article, it also said 38% of all kids in the West now live without their biological father. An increase of 17.5% in 1960. So that tells you how old the article is. In the black community, it is much higher at 67% today. So I went to the internet and I decided to, to I said, you know, I, we all trust Google. And you know, also my, so many facts on Google. So I Googled. In 2014, children born out of wedlock stands at 29%. For whites, 53% for Hispanics, and a whopping 71% in the black community. Families that have no father, that's out of every 10, seven kids, only three kids in the black community have a mother and father in the home. Then David, Dr. David Blankenhorn made a big research and he wrote a book. I actually went on the internet and looked for the title. I saw the, I mean, I could have bought it. I normally buy my old uh, used books from Alibri and I, it's there. And the title of the book is Fatherless America. Fatherless America. And the subtitle is Confronting Our Most Urgent Social Problem. Confronting Our Most Urgent Social Problem. So he concluded based on his studies that the most urgent social problem is this. Quoting, fatherlessness is the most destructive trend of our generation. the most destructive trend of our generation. Fatherlessness is more destructive than drug abuse, more destructive than teen pregnancy, more destructive than gang warfare, incest. I mean, you can't, I don't know if you can think of anything worse than incest, where a father has been sleeping with his daughter for so long, she gets pregnant. He quietly gets her to abort. She gets pregnant again. He gets her to abort. He gets pregnant again. And then the father takes this girl, a very little girl, and gives to a man who abuses her in measures you cannot even talk about. It is fatherlessness is worse than corruption in government. It's worse than corruption in religion. This past few weeks, we've heard was, that what's been happening in SBC. So many pastors now just, you know, accusation of sexual, you know, misconduct. He says, all this, none of them is as bad as fatherlessness. Quoting Time Magazine again, the absence of fathers is linked to most social nightmares, like from boys to guns to girls with babies. It continues in that, it says, it links all that to fatherlessness. In short, if you can get the fathers sorted out, you can solve the crime 
We keep building jails to lock up fathers away than to invest in programs to produce better fathers. This is all coming from the world. Time Magazine again. The effect of fathers, 46% of all families with children headed by single mothers live below poverty line. Compared with only 8% of those with two parents. So, this research is not linking poverty to lack of money. And it's not linking it, you know, that, oh, if we can get, you know, the, 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 the minimum wage to go up. But to the lack of a father in the home. Another article written in 1995 by Time magazine. Social studies show that only 43% of state prison inmates grew up with both parents and that a missing father is a better predictor of criminal activity than race or poverty. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with poverty. Most of the men are in jail because the father was not there. Social scientists have made links between a father's absence and his child's likelihood of being a dropout, jobless, a drug addict, a suicide victim, mentally ill, or target of sexual abuse, such as incest. So it's amazing how we don't understand God. You know what God does. He will give you a command and he will not give any explanation. He will just tell you, do this. And he won't explain why. This message, actually, I got it from another preacher. So I, I'm not going to claim it original. So he gave an example. When God gave the children of Israel laws, hygienic laws, dietary laws, he told them, don't eat fish that have no scales. And he didn't give why. Don't eat fish that have no scales. You know what scientists have discovered today? Every single fish that has no scales have the highest percentage accumulation of mercury. So we blacks, what do we like eating? Can you give me one? Catfish. That's the most popular fish we eat, you know, catfish. What's the other one? Tuna. Fish without scale. Did you know that mercury is the source of insanity? the concentrations of mercury in your brain can lead to mental issues. Can lead to psychological order, disorder. So God in his wisdom told you, don't eat that thing. He wouldn't explain. He didn't say, oh, don't eat it because you're going to have psychological problems. See, that is why the Bible clearly states it's better to obey rather than to argue with God. So now let's get back to this thing about honoring the father and mother. So in Genesis chapter 12, God called Abraham. And he said to Abraham, at that time his name was Abraham before it was changed to Abraham. He says, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you, make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in all the family, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So what did 
God call Abraham to do? God did not call Abraham to start a religion. No, he didn't call Abraham to start a religion. He called Abraham for one specific reason only. To create a great nation. He was going to create a nation that would become a model by which all the nations of the world shall be blessed and judged by that one nation. And he, because all he said today, he says, I will make you a great nation. Did you see any place there where he says, uh, so I can establish a, a religion? God was in the business of building a nation. Note that God did not give the Ten Commandments to Abraham. Abraham. So if God wanted to start a religion, he would have said, okay, Abraham, I want to start a religion. Here are the rules of the religion. He didn't do that. He gave that 430 years later. So why did God call Abraham and say? So God's purpose is to build a nation. It's to build a nation. So to start this process, he takes the, 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 the family of Jacob that is offspring of Abraham. Just 12 sons. Takes them to Egypt because of a famine. He uses a famine to take them there. And while they are in Egypt, they start to multiply. Like, ra like rabbits. And just multiplying. But do you know what God did? God made them become slaves. Slaves that had no personality. They had no name. They didn't belong. They didn't have a name as a nation. They didn't own property. They didn't own land. They had no deeds. They had no pedigree. They had no self-concept. Who are we? They were just slaves. No self-worth. So when God had reduced them to absolutely nothing, that they hadn't, so now says, okay, God, I'm now going to start from scratch. So he sends Moses. He said, Moses, I want you to go to Egypt. I want you to go and get my people out of there. Bring them for me. Bring them to me in the desert. As a side note, you know, for some of us, God is trying to make a great nation out of us. And he will not do it until he has stripped you completely bare. Some of you are still hanging to things. God is trying to pry it out of your hand. You wouldn't let go. And you wonder why you are still in Egypt. You wonder why you are still in Egypt. So, now God ends up, Moses carries out God's plan. They come through the Red Sea. They end up in the desert. And we all know what happened at Mount Sinai. God says, okay, now I'm ready. Now I want to build a nation. I've got the right stuff here. What does he do? He goes to the first prime minister, Moses. He says, now I'm going to give you the building blocks of how to build a nation. These are the rules that will be used to build the nation. So now you see. So though, what did God say? So any successful nation must be built on a foundation of common law. You've got to recognize the importance of law. Law creates culture. Law creates society. Law then builds a community. So what makes a community is a common law. So when we all agree to the same laws, we become a community. So laws produce a country. Maybe that's the reason why most countries in Africa are still a banana republic. Because 
They may have a constitution and they may have laws, but nobody follows them. Starting from the top, people just do whatever they want. You know, like in Nigeria, now people, when they steal money, they don't steal in millions, they steal in billions. No, seriously. I remember talking to one man, you know, and he says, government money does not belong to anybody. You can, anybody can take it. Because there's no common law that binds everybody together. So back to God starting a nation. So God gives Moses the first lawgiver instructions on building a country. Building a country. So when you read the instructions God gave Moses, which we today call the Ten Commandments, and we make it a religion, God is not giving instructions for religion, but instructions for national development. So, for a nation to be built, what was the very first commandment, the most important one of all? I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other God except me. So, for a nation to be properly built, you have to have a you know, an authority that decides what is right and what is wrong. What is, what is proper and what is not. What is evil and what is good. What is darkness and what is light. So God says, look, I am your authority. If you want to build this nation, it's me and nobody else. So any nation, any nation is determined by who is the supreme authority? And so you hear people, you know, said, oh, the, the missionaries should have never gone to Africa. You know, Africa, they had their own religion. And you have Africans who are proud. We have our own religion. We had our own gods. You know, the one we had in, uh, in uh, Kwaibun, where I came from, it was a god that demanded that if you had twins, they were evil. And this just, I mean, just if in the 50s, they were still being practiced, 60s. If you had, they considered that uh, only goats have more than one. Human beings normally have only one. So the moment you have a twin, it must be evil. So what do they do? They take the babies alive into an evil forest and leave it there for the gods. And you know what happens? Wild animals go and eat them. So that was our supreme authority of building our nation. And I know every one of you from me, all the tribes can tell, you know, what, what happens over there. Whatever gods they have. In, you know. But God said, if you want to build a nation, I, because I'm perfect, listen to me. No other gods. That is the foundation for building a nation. But we're not going to go through looking at all the Ten Commandments. Then stop there at number five. It says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. In short, God, I thought you were building a nation. Why are you talking about fathers and mothers? What has this got to do with building a nation? But you just remember, have you forgotten the statistics we read at the beginning of the message from unbelievers? You know what's going on now. Now you don't go to the store because some crazy guy is just going to get up and decide today, I'm going to just mow down as many people as possible. They have not done me anything. They are not related to me. Or I just go to a church. Like the one, the last one. An old man gets invited to church. And he goes in there and he sits there. And he takes out his gun and starts just shooting people. The statistics say most of these people, you can trace them back. Trace them back to a father. So it's now clear that if you follow God's laws, and God's laws are civic laws, 
There are cultural laws. There are penal laws. There are certain things where God says, if somebody does this, this is what they should happen to them. He said, today, uh, today, we say, ah, that's barbaric. This guy goes and just shoots people and just kills as many people as possible. And you take him to court. They say, no, you can't hang him. No, you can't. You can't execute him. That's horrible. You can't do that. So, hygiene laws. God says, if you follow those laws, you will make a successful country. So, this is a national security problem. When you dishonor your father, you are against national development. When you curse your father and your mother, you are an antisocial creature. Many of you under the sound of my voice will be quick to say, if only you knew who my father is, you know, what a wicked man he was and what he has done to me, you will not ask him to honor, ask me to honor him. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. Yes, your father has done something. I mean, just some indescribable thing. Verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy life, long life on the earth. Did you catch that? Read it again. Children, obey your parents. Honor your father and mother. Children, obey your parents. Honor your father and mother. Did you see guys that? The Bible clearly distinguishes the difference between a parent and a biological father. It's possible for the two to be the same person. But it is also possible that they are not the same. They can be different. For example, some of us were raised by grandparents. But your father is still your father. And your mother is still your mother, if we are raised by a grandmother. Your stepfather or your grandfather will never, never be your father. Even if you call him father, dad, no matter how well they raised you, he can never be your father. He can never become your biological father. Yes, he is a parent. So, God is so smart. See, sometimes we read the Bible, and we just read it. We don't really listen to what he's saying. He says, obey your parent, but honor your father and mother. Because some of the things are parents, and like I said, it's a difficult message for me because I am as guilty as anybody else. You know, some, thing, some of the things that are our, the people who gave birth to us have done to us have made it difficult, if not impossible. It, God never said love them. I challenge you, go from Genesis to Revelation, go and find a place where God said, love your parents. He says, honor them. He did not even say to obey your father because your father may be doing things you shouldn't do or asking or even commanding you to do things God hates. In which case, God says you can disobey him. But what God says in Ephesians 6, he says, obey your parents. And even then he qualifies that in the Lord. Now a parent can be the same or different from a biological father 78% of babies 
born uh, to unwed mothers, which is a national security issue. Remember that all this thing is tied to a nation building. This is the destruction of our country because where there is no stable father in the home, you have yourself a criminal program producing criminals. So what is a parent? The word parent comes from the word, you know, pater, paternal. And paternal means to care for, to give, to source, to nurture, to feed, not just food, but emotional stability, instruction, relationship. It means discipline, giving that thing that you are nurturing everything it needs to be sustained. That's parenting. So, so you are now, now surprised that it's possible to have a father who's not a parent. You know, like a father, I mean, it used to happen in Africa. Hey, boy, I'm your daddy. Go, go, to the, go and get me a pint of liquor from the liquor store. But you are 20 years old. You are a Christian. And you know, that, you know in Proverbs 31, 6, he says, give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who have a bitter heart. That's your dad. You call, I'm your dad. You better do what I say. Oh, son, I just bought two kilos of coke from that guy from the corner, and he wants his money. Go get it for me. I'm your daddy, son. So what do you do? Is this a parent or a father? So next time when you read, you know, Ephesians 6, you understand what we are talking about. So you may have heard of a father showing up at a, a son's graduation. The mother raised him for 18 years and he wasn't there. But he's there, mad that they don't recognize him. Yeah, it happened to Shaquille O'Neal. You are not the parent. What are you doing here for credit, you know, taking credit, looking for credit? Huh? For things you never did. This occasion is for parents. You ain't taking no pictures with this child. You are not leading this daughter down the aisle to give her hand in marriage. You were not there for years. The courts were looking for you to pay child support, but you were not there to be found. Get away from here. You are not a parent. All you are, you are a sperm donor. So, a parent are those who instruct you in the things of the Lord. Colossians 3, verse 20 to 21, says, Children, Obey your parents. You see, God repeats things more than once to make sure you get it right. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. He did not say your father or mother in everything. It says, obey the one who's been with you all day, all night for 20 to 30 years of your life. That's your parent. The one who was there to weep with you and clean with you and, you know, pay things for you, take you to school, do your homework with you, weep on your shoulders with you, and deal with your issues. That's your parent. You'd be glad if he's the same parent, if you're a biological father. But the real parent you need to obey, listen to. And yet God says, honor your father. Why? The reason is because the most important component of human fa family is fatherhood. Most important. In fact, it goes even deeper because you always hear the saying, so goes the father, so goes the family, so goes the community and the nation. So I think from the preponderance of the scientific data I just presented at the beginning, you should be now sure that whatever happens to the father is what happens to the country. 
you are exactly what your father made you, whether he was absent or not. And most of it is that his absence made it even worse. Let me also add that females need their fathers more than males. I listened to Dr. Dobson two days ago. I almost cried. He was writing a book. He said he brought all these girls, about 20 of them, into his, into his room. He, was be, he says, I want you to talk to me about what it means to be a girl. He says, all of them, like a beeline, started talking about their father. Every one of them. He says, there was no dry eye in the room. They started describing some of those whose parents were, whose father was there but was not there. Or those whose their father left and those who the father was there and was at, you could see the difference. So this is the reason why the average woman makes bad decisions because her father wasn't there to give her a sense of balance. Most women are afraid of men, do not trust men, are suspicious because their father did not build in them the confidence to help them identify a good man. For that reason, they are afraid of men. They always make mistakes choosing the wrong person. The other reason why God chose and said this is very important is because dad is destiny. In that Time Magazine article, it says the father is the destiny of the country. The highest honor placed on the male is the title of father. Why? It's the most amazing title. Why? Because God has the same title himself. So what does God do? He places on the, uh, on the human male by giving him exactly the same title that he has. God says, Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven. And then he turns around and gives a human being. He says, you are like me. I give you that title. It's an honor. So what does the word Father mean? The word Father is taken from the Hebrew word Abba, or in Greek, Pater. And it means one. The word father, Abba, means a source. Two, it means a nourisher. Three, it means a sustainer or provider. It means a protector. It means a progenitor. It means a founder of foundation. You know, they, normally it's funny when the when they son says, oh, the father of electricity. Why don't they say the mother? They always say, the, so he's the founder. He started the whole thing. Like Abraham started this thing. It means author. It means maker. So Abba means source. It means nourisher. It means sustainer, provider. It means protector. And then it means proge, progenitor, progenition, pro, progeneration. From the word gene, and gene means genetic coding. Genetic coding comes, you know, comes from the word father, progenitor. So the source of your genes is from your from your daddy. You know, the 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 egg in the mother it just stays there, and it takes a sperm from the father to go and say, okay, life starts. If it doesn't go, nothing happens. So even if you don't know your father, if you've never seen him, you are still carrying him in your bloodstream. The major genetic make makeup of your life comes from your father. He's the progenitor. He's the source. And therefore, the father is the foundation. The foundation. So why is this important to us? You honor your father because your father is the foundation, one. Two, your father is the root. Three, your father is the source. Your father is the genetic pool 
I repeat it. Your father is the foundation. He's the root. He's the source. He's the genetic pool from which you came from. So that's the reason why you have to honor. When you honor your father, it doesn't matter what you are honoring your foundation. Why? Because the tree is only as good as its root. The house is only as valuable as its foundation. The quality of an offspring is determined by its genetic source. See, that's why they, when they breed horses, they, they, they look for one that has a, a, as pure a, a genetic background as possible. When, when animal breeders do that, the same with dogs. So guess what? Your genetic foundation is so critical. And also, the condition of the root affects the life of the plant. So, I just cut it short. The tree is only as good as its root. So, if you root, where does the tree get its nutrients? From the root. So, if the root, if you have a father who doesn't know how to seek God and get the nutrients from God and get wisdom and get and get knowledge and get vision and get and see what's happening. You're in deep doo doo. So you are only as good as the root. We own the house in Charlotte and we found out later that the foundation was cracked. Cracked seriously, cracked so bad that half of the house in the summer, the house is like this. The, 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 the things will expand and tend to line up again. In the winter, you go back like this. No matter what we did, we couldn't fix the crack. And I would never have been able to sell the house. Thank God, before I could sell the house, I had the move to come here, and the company gave me enough money, and I went and got a special company that came and pumped some chemicals under the house that lifted the foundation until it was level again. Your house is useless. I did. It doesn't matter if it's worth $15 million. The moment they found out that the foundation is bad, even the government will call and tell you, look, you can't live there. You've got to get out. So that is why you've got to honor the foundation. That's why the, the honor has to be restored to the foundation. That's what's, you know, before I used to join everybody, you know, the Democrats, Republicans, you know. No, that's not the problem. None of them has the answer. The foundation is the problem. The quality of an, in, of an offspring is determined by a genetic structure source. If you are dead, you know, I used to wonder why would God tell the children of Israel, when you get to that land, I want you to destroy everyone, including babies. And people in the world use it and say, oh, your God is a horrible God until you find out what the kids do. Someone sent me a video on TikTok the other day. It was horrible. I'm talking three-year-olds. Probably the kids don't know what they're doing. But that's what they see their father doing. Sexual acts that in public. Where did they get it from? From the parents. From the father. I remember one time in Charlotte, called Myers Park. When you go, it's only the rich people live there. You go, the trees, huge trees, everywhere is shaded. All the streets are lined with trees. And then one hurricane came. And all those trees were on their side. And the news car said, you know the reason why? Because there was so much water in the ground, the trees did not struggle to find any water. So what did they do? They did the easy thing, just spread their, you know, their roots on the surface. No roots going deep. 
So when the hurricane came, what came? What happened? Those beautiful trees all toppled. That's what a father is supposed to be. A father who does not spend time to put his roots down so that when he loses a job, he doesn't lose his mind. When crisis comes, the whole family can stand on, on because he's there. No matter what the enemy brings to that family, his roots are deep in God. This is why we have to honor our father. That is why God has to restore honor to the Father. Maybe God is having this message for very young people who haven't married yet. It's possible that's the reason why you haven't gotten married. Because God says, one, you don't even have roots. Your root is rotten. You, if I let you have a family now, you're going to just make another mess. Maybe this is the time you have to start marrying and praying. And then you girls, start praying. Lord, I want a man who has roots, whose roots are good and deep. Lord, I don't want to be part of the statistic. Because the world is gone crazy. It's funny because the world does the statistics. But they don't follow it. They don't do something about it. You don't hear any government programs on how to raise good men. They spend all the money, women crisis centers. I'm not, we're not saying that's bad. But when we know that God says, you know, the head, the, the man is not just the head, he's the roots. So if you're not doing anything to secure the roots, no wonder the nation is falling apart. We do all the studies, but we don't act on it. This is a very heavy message because we have a problem on our hands. Today we are praying, we are crying, oh Lord, have mercy on us. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. Crime has gone out of hand. Now we're getting to the point in, in, in the U.S., you now have to be looking behind you to see, am I okay? All because the laws that God gave on how to build a nation, we threw it out the window. And guess what? Even in the church, it's no different. In fact, it's got to the point that even the church now, you talk to a Christian, and the first thing he starts to do is, is quote CNN and then quote you know what's happening, what the lecturer said, and you know what this person said and what that person said. You don't hear them say about the word of God. So when God gives a command, it's better to obey than to argue. Because eventually, you always find out at the end, oh, God was right. He had a reason. He didn't tell me why. And so, as I close, we're going to pray and say, Lord, am I going to be a part of the, am I already a part of the problem? That's a question I ask myself. Lord, have mercy. It's not too late. It's not too late. Are you a parent who is there, but you are not involved in the life of your children? You are as good as if you are not there. And that is so sad, especially for our girls. Like Dr. Dobson says, the girl's first boyfriend should be her dad. Should learn how a man should behave. What kind of a man to look for. But when the man is not there, she go and cut it from outside and start making wrong choices. So let's stand, let's pray.